beautiful day to you, our beautiful viewers. It is a pleasure once again to welcome you to Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. At Women on the Watch, we are committed to exposing time-tested principles for practical application to your personal and relationship development matters. My name is Wanola Detail, the Shaper. Let me start by saying thank you to all of you who have connected with us through promotion inquiries, questions, comments, or through the purchase of our books. We say God bless you. And if by chance, I hope not, that you are one of those that might still be waiting on us for a response, by the grace of God, you'll hear from us shortly. In furtherance of our family series, we concluded last week the episode titled, Sibling Rivalry. I am trusting that you are beginning to experience peace, love, and joy amongst your siblings as you continue to apply the principles that you learned from that two-part episode. Today's episode is titled, Managing Dangerous Emotions Through Emotional Intelligence. We will take our Bible text from Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11, the English Standard Version. A fool gives vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity for us to learn through your word and to learn from your ways. Father, we acknowledge that we know absolutely nothing, but we stand upon your word that stands sure forever. And so we trust, oh God, that today you will enlighten our understanding on the subject of managing dangerous emotions through emotional intelligence. Spirit of the living God, we surrender our hearts and our minds to you. We ask that you give us teachable hearts and teachable spirits so that our time with you shall grant wonderful fruits so that we'll live lives that will be pleasing in your sight. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen and amen. The story of Nabal, David, and Abigail, according to 1 Samuel chapter 25. Nabal was a wealthy man whose wife was Abigail. Abigail was described as an intelligent and beautiful woman, whilst her husband was described as a mean man in his dealings. Nabal owned a thousand goats and three thousand sheep and on this special day, he was sharing sheep. David heard in the wilderness where he was that Nabal was sharing sheep, and he sent some of his men to Nabal. David asked the men to greet Nabal respectfully, using these words, long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. The man, asked Nabal to notice the kindness that David and his men had shown to Nabal's staff by protecting the sheep and goats from harm whilst they were together in the wilderness. David's men subsequently requested on behalf of David that Nabal should extend a similar hand of fellowship by giving whatever he thought fit to David and his men from the festive celebration that he was having. When this message was delivered to Nabal, David's servant waited for Nabal's response. To their disappointment and dismay, Nabal was rude to them and sent a harsh word of rejection to David, declaring them to be persona non grata, meaning that they were unknown and meant nothing to him. And he blatantly refused David's request. The servants 
returned in pain to David and they relayed everything exactly as Nabal had spoken. In a fit of rage, David got 400 of his men carrying their swords to go with him to Nabal with intention to teach Nabal a lesson for his bad behavior and his complete lack of empathy. While this was going on, one of the servants of Nabal informed Abigail, his wife, of what had happened, how Nabal had hurled insults upon and mistreated David's servants who came to request respectfully from him. The servant also told Abigail about the good treatment that they, as Nabal's staff, had received from David's men when they were in the wilderness with Nabal's sheep, how David's men had protected them. Nabal's servant, therefore, urged Abigail to see what she could do, as it was very obvious that disaster was going to befall Nabal and his entire family for this bad behavior towards those who had been good to them. Abigail acted swiftly. She gathered food, drinks in their hundreds, and loaded them on the donkeys. She sent the servants to carry these ahead of her and warned them not to disclose to Nabal. She followed Nabal's servants herself and fortunately met David and the 300 men on their way to attack Nabal and his family. Abigail humbled herself before David and pleaded for forgiveness on behalf of her husband. She begged David to excuse the bad treatment as she was unaware of the visit and the request from David's servants. Abigail pleaded with David that it was a good thing that God sent her to prevent David from unnecessary bloodshed, especially since she had brought gifts for David and his men. As Abigail pleaded for forgiveness, she prayed for David and went further to make requests to David to remember her when God would make him rule over Israel. David blessed God for sending Abigail to him and thanked Abigail for her good judgment in preventing him from avenging himself since he was fully prepared and on the journey to slaughter every male in Nabal's household that very day. David subsequently accepted Abigail's gifts and called off his journey of vengeance. Abigail returned home to find her husband drunk from the feast that he held that day. The following morning, when Nabal was sober, Abigail relayed all that had happened and Nabal had a heart failure immediately. 10 days later, Nabal died because, because God struck him. When David heard what had happened to Nabal, he blessed God for not allowing him to fall into the sin of vengeance and bloodshed. He immediately sent for Abigail and made this widowed woman his wife. It is our sincere heart cry that God will grant every family head and other family members the wisdom and intelligence to deal with emotions that cause much havoc and damage to lives in the mighty name of Jesus. A successful marriage does not happen by chance, it is built deliberately. Just as every building requires a foundation, so does every marriage. In laying the foundation for a lasting marriage, Wanawola Adatayo presents couples and intending couples with practical insights and guidance as a wise coach inspired by the Holy Spirit. The book draws on biblical principles and patterns to instruct and equip readers for a marriage that will bring glory to God while also affording the couple lasting joy and fulfillment. With inspired prayer points and practical answers to 44 frequently asked questions, laying the foundation for a lasting marriage is a treasured trove for readers at every stage of the marriage journey. Send a WhatsApp message or call 0812 402 0538 to order your copies today. Welcome back. The story of Nabal and his pitiable ending shows the terrible havoc that could befall a family when the family members lack the wisdom and understanding to manage dangerous emotions. We thank God for the wisdom 
and good judgment demonstrated by Abigail, which prevented a great disaster from befalling the entire family. All neighbor's sons, male servants, and their sons would have died unnecessarily, and many ladies would have become widowed in their prime of life. I pray once again for every family that God will grant us needed wisdom, understanding, and judgment to manage dangerous emotions and eventually eliminate or eradicate them from our lives and our families. In today's episode, titled Emotional Intelligence for Managing Dangerous Emotions, we will examine the following. Number one, definition of emotions. Number two, definition of emotional intelligence. Number three, we will look at the attributes of emotionally intelligent persons. And lastly, we will look at the benefits of emotional intelligence. So, what is an emotion? An emotion is a strong feeling deriving from mood, circumstances, or relationship with others. We notice that in the case of Nabal, he was having certain strong feeling which made him to react to the circumstance whereby David's men came to ask him to share with them what he wanted to use for celebration. Secondly, an emotion is an instinctive, an instinctive or intuitive feeling. It doesn't emanate from reasoning or knowledge. It just comes intuitively. We discover that this is what happened to David. When he got the message uh -uh, that neighbor insulted him and sent his servants back, intuitively and instinctively, he just decided, ah, uh -uh, what nonsense is this? I'm going to go and show this man. That is what we call emotion. It comes intuitively without the application of reasoning. That is why an emotional person is usually somebody who is excessively worked up or affected by an emotion. Now, there are five basic types of emotions, and we're going to look at them according to the, the number of times they occur one way or another in the Bible. Number one emotion is happiness. It is mentioned approximately 32 times in the Bible, that is the New International Version. Sadness is another emotion. It's mentioned about 11 times in the New International Version. Fear is a very strong emotion. It is mentioned approximately 321 times. Anger is mentioned about 274 times in the Bible, whilst hatred is mentioned about 149 times. So if you look at the number of mentions in the Bible, fear and anger are extremely dangerous emotions. When left unmanaged, they can cause great havoc to individuals and their loved ones. And therefore, one of the ways to manage these emotions is to acquire the skill that is called emotional intelligence. So exactly what is emotional intelligence? What is emotional intelligence? It is the ability to balance the rational and emotional parts of our thoughts. There are feelings that come simply from what? Emotions. Yet, from our brain, we can reason along. So emotional intelligence is the ability to balance what we are feeling with what we should be thinking so that we can respond appropriately to situations or people. Again, what is emo uh, emotional intelligence? According to David Caruso, he says, and I quote, emotional intelligence is not the opposite of intelligence, neither is it the triumph of the heart over the head. However, it is the unique intersection, that is, your ability to combine what you are feeling with what your reasoning is telling you. A third way to look at emotional intelligence is the ability to moderate your feelings by applying what good judgment to produce healthy responses, which is precisely what Abigail did. 
she applied good judgment. Therefore, rather than just allowing feelings to thrive anyhow, she applied good judgment, she applied good reasoning, and she was able to respond appropriately to the occasion. Now, what are five attributes of emotionally intelligent persons? Number one is that they treat people respectfully, irrespective of their particular status or even the level. They treat everyone respectfully. And we could see that in the case of Abigail. She treated David in spite of her wealth, in, fight, in spite of her status, she treated David respectfully. She understood the importance of what we call stooping to conquer. Nabal did not demonstrate this trait. Therefore, he looked at David. He looked at the servants. Do I know who you are? Do I even know whether you ran away from your master? Why should I share things with you? We are told in Philippians chapter 2, verse, th uh, verse 3. Philippians 2, 3. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. It says, rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Now, a second attribute of those who have emotional intelligence is that they are open-minded. You see, if we look at Abigail, she was open-minded. She was open-minded to receive the messengers from neighbor's staff. They came and said to her, Madam, this is what is happening. She didn't say, I will defend my husband. She opened her mind and judged the matter objectively. So she was open also to receive their advice that, hey, madam, you need to do something very quickly, okay? She received their advice. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, English Standard Version, judge not that you be not judged. What are the attributes of emotionally intelligent persons? Number three, they are what? Good listeners. Those who are emotionally intelligent, they are good listeners. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 19, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. You see, Nabal did not exhibit good listening skills. He did not truly listen to David's servants. Unlike David, when Abigail told, told him, hey, hey, please, don't shed unnecessary blood. You are about to become king. He opened his ears. He listened to reasoning. And that is why he was able to make the right decision. So people who are emotionally intelligent have good listening skills. Number four, highly emotionally intelligent people, they do not hesitate to apologize when they are wrong. Too many people Ego is a problem for them. They can never admit wrong. They feel it makes them small. But in this case, <laughs> Abigail was quick to apologize for a crime that she herself did not even commit. She acknowledged the wrong that the husband had committed and she brokered peace in the best interest of all parties. David also did not hesitate to change his mind about the vengeance and the vendetta that he was about to perform. Once he found better reasoning, you see, Bible tells us, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, a gentle answer turneth away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So highly emotionally intelligent people don't hesitate to apologize when they are wrong. Number five, the fifth attribute of highly emotionally intelligent people is that they demonstrate self control. They don't allow their emotions to control them. They take control of their emotions. You see, in the midst of anxiety and fear about what David could do to their family, Abigail demonstrated self-control. He made right decision. One, she made right decision to act swiftly. She even demonstrated self-control in the manner in which she approached David. She demonstrated self-control in the way she packaged the reasoning that compelled David to withdraw himself from the journey of vengeance. You see, compared to Nabal, who justified the funny feeling 
that he was having. He didn't, he just felt that, you know what? Ah, my, my, I'm feeling, no, you know, what is wrong with you people? You are talking to me, who are you? And he just allowed that emotion to take control instead of him taking control of the emotion. The Bible tells us, Proverbs 25, 28, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Like a city whose walls are broken through. It means you are open to anything when you lack self-control. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. English Standard Version. Now, what are the five benefits of emotional intelligence? Which means, why should you and I want to be emotionally intelligent? And we see this in the story of Nabal, David, and Abigail. Number one, when you have emotional intelligence, it improves the quality of your decision making. We could see it in Abigail. In 1 Samuel 25, verse 18, look at the decisions that Abigail made. Number one, she acted swiftly. Quality decision. Number two, she packed generous gifts. Quality decision. So that that way, the gifts would not have been an insult to David. Number three, she sent the younger servants ahead of her so that at least they could have met David in case she was late. Quality decision. Number four, she followed them. She didn't just send them. Otherwise, David would have felt insulted. They sent, they sent all the servants to me. She herself followed them. That's number four. Number five, quality decision. She said, you know what? Let's not inform neighbor Lo in case he will go and stop us from doing what is right. So when you are emotionally intelligent, you make quality decisions. Number two benefit is that it averts unnecessary conflicts and wars. In the case of David, in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 34, he confessed. He said, otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, if you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. But because of emotional intelligence, when they came to him, he was able to avert unnecessary bloodshed and unnecessary war. Number three is that when you are emotionally intelligent, it creates effective alliances across Kada, junior staff, senior staff, senior brother, junior brother. You can create alliances. Look at Abigail. Abigail and Nabal's staff, they worked effectively together to deliver excellent results that protected all of them from danger and from death. Read it in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 14 to 22. When you are highly emotionally intelligent, it decreases personal stress. It was stress that killed Nabal. The Bible records 1 Samuel 25. Verse 37, because he didn't have emotional intelligence. Then in the morning, when Nabal was sober, his wife told him all these things. And his heart failed him and he became like a stone. You see, if Nabal had emotional intelligence, he would not have been so terrified such that his heart completely froze. So you can avoid stress when you have emotional intelligence. Number five, benefit of emotional intelligence is that God fights on your behalf. Because with emotional intelligence, you don't fight for yourself. Therefore, God will take up your case and fight for you. In 1 Samuel 25, 38 to 39, this is what David said. You know, the Bible says, about 10 days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, praise be to the Lord who has upheld my cause against Nabal for treating me with content. He has kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nabal's wrongdoing on his own head. You see, God takes control when we're emotionally intelligent. In summary, in today's episode, we have defined emotions as well as emotional intelligence. Please remember that fear and anger are the most potent, followed by what? Hatred. We need to be very watchful of these three emotions and feelings. We have looked at five attributes of people with emotional intelligence. And I'm hoping that you will begin to eliminate, I mean, at all, to emulate these attributes from now on. Lastly, we have examined the five benefits of emotional intelligence to convince us what we stand to gain 
as individuals and families as we embrace emotional intelligence. As we wind up today's part one of the emotional intelligence, managing dangerous emotions, I want to invite you to next week's concluding episode. And in next week's episode, we will learn the needed steps and approaches to becoming emotionally intelligent as individuals for our benefit and for the benefit of our loved ones. If you have been blessed by this program and wish to partner with us, please connect with us on plus 234-812-0538. Till I come your way next week, this is Wanola Detayo, the shaper, trusting God that you will take necessary steps to control those dangerous emotions as they come up using your God-given power of self-control. As you do this, may God grant you good success. Shalom.